So hello everyone, welcome to an All Blaze No Glory special, um, the second episode of Back in Bandy. I'm joined by, um, I'm going to get all this wrong, Amy, but I'm sorry, I'm going to do this intro in full. Captain of the Glasgow Phoenix Ball Hockey Team, player for GBU Ice Hockey, player for GBU Ball Hockey, um, player for Caledonia Steel Queens, player for Glasgow Stags, Bandy player, and the mother of all kinds of small creatures. Is that is that about right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and Kingston Diamonds. There and we Kingston go. Di- How could I forget Kingston Diamonds? <laughs> I was just going through it though. I was like, right, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I got all the Scottish-based clubs in there. So um, it's, it's, it's good to have you on. Um, and one of the reasons we're coming on is because... Um, a lot, a lot of the girls I've, I know and have coached in ice hockey are now, are now taking up bandy with the new um, Great British uh, bandy team uh, being put together. So how, how did you get involved in, in the bandy uh, the bandy setup? Yeah, so it's pretty much the same as um, the other girls, uh, Beth and Vicky and Ashlyn. We, we had contact from one of our GBU teammates who had put a message in the chat and said, is anyone interested? And I just kind of put my name forward, um, got a call from the coach and we talked about it and I, I just I thought it'd be a great opportunity and decided to to go ahead with it yeah brilliant brilliant and um uh you've obviously you play you play a bit of ball hockey as well do, do you find the uh, I know that it's a different type of stick but do you find stick handling with a ball as opposed to a puck is, is giving you a little bit of an advantage for the bandy I think it's definitely been helpful it's it's a similar concept but it's when you're on the ice with the ball, you can't really feel it on your stick that much, which is really odd because when you have a puck, you can obviously feel it on your stick. And then ball hockey, you can also feel it's lighter, but so it's kind of a a different one altogether. But it's 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 good. Cool, cool. And um, I know that you didn't you didn't make it out to Sweden when when they they had the first camp there. But if you you've been down to some of the the sessions in in Sheffield and 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 met your teammates and things. Yeah, I've been down a few times now um, and planning on going as much as possible up until the, the World Championships. And we've got a, a WhatsApp group chat and we're all getting to know each other and doing some workouts together. So it's been nice to get to know each other and do some team building that way. So so tell, tell us a bit about the, the workouts. What what do they involve? They can't, are, they, are they quite elaborate things or is it like sort of 1K Wednesdays and that, and that sort of thing again? Um, yeah, there's a lot of different kind of running thing, challenges and there's some video calls where we kind of meet up and um, just do whatever we want to do. It's kind of sporadic, you just kind of, does anyone want to do a workout now? And then you kind of all go on. And, but no, it's a great a great atmosphere. The people are all really nice. Cool, cool. And you, you um, obviously you've been skating quite well. I know you've you, you done a bit of figure skating when you were younger and got into hockey. Um, yeah. How do you how do you find that? I suppose that at the moment, if you've only been at the sessions in Sheffield, you've not been on the big ice yet. But how how are you finding the difference in skating at that sort of slightly lower stance and things that you'll need for bandy compared to your ice hockey stance and your figure skating stance? Yeah, it's a lot more uncomfortable. You have to be a lot um, lower down, so it kind of hurts the back a bit. I'm still getting past that stage, but it's the style isn't so different. It's just that kind of bending down and being all kind of cramped up a bit cool cool and if have you have you looked up any bandy games online to to watch and to kind of get a feel for for the sport or um you just kind of winging it at the moment and and taking each day as it comes a little bit of both we've seen some some game footage and i've not managed to watch a full game yet but i've kind of had a look at some highlight videos and um some videos we do like at the sessions down in sheffield they would do like a, a kind of a computer session where you would watch like the different skills and I guess like a an analysis session. Um, so it's interesting to see the kind of different style. And I watch quite a bit of football as well, so there's kind of the similarities in position, I guess. Of course, you're a you're a Southampton fan. Um, is, yeah. Is that correct? And how how did you become a Southampton fan again? Um, I was born down in Southampton, so I just kind of followed along with them. I got a Southampton top for my fourth birthday. I've still got it. It says Amy Four on the back. Um, and over lockdown, I started getting really bored. So I took up watching the games and I've, I've just caught the bug. Brilliant, brilliant. And um, how have you found, um, obviously, training and, and, you know, 
we've, we're in this sort of strange time in the world for the last couple of years where we're in the middle of a pandemic. How, how have you found training and, and you know, the frustrations of that? How, how have you got past all that? Um, I think it's been really difficult, on, honestly, because you never know when your next session is going to be and you don't really know if we're going to be locked down, if we're going to be able to get into a gym, if we'll be able to get on the ice. Um, so that's been quite difficult. Um, I've been trying to take up a lot of the kind of running challenges to try and keep my fitness up. Um, and then Matt and I try and bounce off each other to try and keep each other motivated, um, which has been really helpful. Um, we used to go on like 10K walks, which was really good. Um, I think we need to start doing that again. But no, Don't, don't yeah. we all after Christmas? Definitely. <laughs> And um, you, you, may, you mentioned you mentioned that, that Matt obviously is your 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 boyfriend, your partner. He's been uh, he, he's quite in how can I put it quite an influence in your sporting career in a way, but also um, has similar interests, I guess, is, is the is the is the the short version. So Matt plays ball hockey with you, I think, and is he is he quite interested in the bandy himself, or is he just kind of? support you but he's, he's he's sticking with his hockey I don't think he would play it I think maybe he'd give it a, a try I don't think he'd take it up but I think he's keen to see how we do um follow on with that so I think he's been into he had a wee go with the stick um that we brought home when we were uh, one of the ball hockey sessions and he was shooting better than me so you never know maybe maybe he can take my place uh, well, may maybe, maybe it would be a, a bold choice for him uh, to, to do that. And then uh, the other thing I meant to, to uh, I forgot to introduce, you also do a bit of uh, a bit of judo as well. And, and that's something you I could, do, yeah. Yeah. Um, and just, I mean, I, I try and cover as many different things as I can with, with this sort of project I'm doing. The judo, what, what's the sort of, um, what's the participation level like in Scotland for judo? Because it's something you, you don't really hear a lot about, uh, you know, in, in, in normal circles of, of people. So what, what's the participation like in, in, in Scotland for judo? Um, I think there's a lot of different clubs that all get a lot of different members. Um, hundreds of people. Um, I, don't, I don't even know numbers, to be honest. Um, my club is one of the biggest clubs. It's also an international club. So they've got um, clubs out in Europe somewhere because um, I... I have such a great knowledge right now. Um, <laughs> but we have a full mat every session, which is really good. That's yeah. that, that's good. And and perhaps you can explain, because this is something that I've never understood, and I'm sure others won't, is what what is the scoring system in judo? There's a there's a something called an Ippon and there's a, a Wazari, I think, and yep. I don't know what any of that means. So right. So if you throw your opponent on your back, um flat on their back, or if you bridge, so like when you, your shoulder goes shoulder to shoulder when you're mm -hmm. on your back, that's an up on and it automatically ends the fight. Um, the same can happen if you do a hold down for, I think it's 20 seconds. The rules all changed when I was abroad, but I think it's 20 seconds for an up on to hold. Um, there's Wazaris, which is like when you're on your side, you throw them on your side or you hold them for a short length of time, which I think at the moment it's, 10 seconds or seven seconds. You can get two Rosaries, which will equal an up on. Um, you can also get straight up ons if you do like chokes or strangles or like arm locks and they, they tap out and that'll automatically end the fight. So you're basically looking to get an up on and win the fight straight away. Okay. And and how did you find yourself getting into judo? I mean, you've got quite a quite a eclectic mix of sports. You've got your, you know, your ice hockey, your your ball hockey. Now you're bandy, and and obviously you've got you've got judo as as well. How did you find yourself getting involved in judo? Um, so when I was in primary school, so I would have been about seven or eight. My coach, well, two of my coaches, they came into our school primary school and did a, de a demonstration, and they handed us flyers on the the way out of the gym hall. And according to my mum, I was running down the hill shouting, "I want to try judo." <laughs> I'd, I'd done a lot of like dancing and stuff like that and it just wasn't really my kind of thing um, and I was looking for something a bit more I guess physical or more my kind of style um, and I tried it and I just fell in love with it. Cool, cool. Um, it's, it's interesting as I say because it's not something that 
a lot of people talk about in, in Scotland, apart from maybe when the Olympics are on. But yeah. um, um, so obviously, with all with all that sport, you must be pretty much shattered most weeks, I would imagine, um, <laughs> with all that running about. Um, but to get back to to get back to Bandy, um, you, you obviously you've told us how you got involved in, in things like that. Now you've been at a few world championships with with ball hockey. You've been to Biramaki with ice hockey and things like that. What what are you expecting? Or what? Tell us what it's like to be in one of these world championship events. What you know, mixed with all these different cultures of people. It's a really surreal experience. I remember we went to the senior world championships um, for the ball hockey, and they had the men's final on. And the there was a couple of different arenas, and we all kind of were under the arena, and we could see there was a sold out arena for all these. I think it was Czech versus Slovakia. And the whole arena was sold out and you're like, holy shit, like that's insane that this sport in my country that's got not a massive following has this sold out arena in there. It, it was crazy. Um, one of the nights we, uh, my mum and I went out for pizza and it was on the TV and I was like, I'm here for this event. Like that's, it's, it's honestly, it's insane. These countries are, are so hockey crazy it's it's just so different to the UK hopefully the UK can get up to that kind of level in terms of ball hockey I, I think it, you know it's one it's a bit of a growing sport it's one thing that's it's easier to get into than ice hockey and roller hockey because you don't have that added that everyone can walk or run right yeah. generally speaking yeah, it's really inclusive and it's it's generally cheaper as well because you've got less equipment that you need you don't need skates you don't need shorts or anything like that it's just a t-shirt, shorts, hockey stick, helmet, gloves, and you're good to go. Yeah, and, and with, with the ball hockey, it's a bit more, um, I would say, relaxed in terms of, of registrations and things they do. Is it draft tournaments and things they do as opposed to with ice hockey? It's very regimented. You're in your club and there's all kinds of, sometimes it can be all kinds of difficulty if you want to have a guest game with another club. The ball hockey seems a bit more relaxed. Is that is that right? Or have I got... Yes and no, they've just started a registration system, but you can register for two different teams. So like you've got your first team and your second team, which is useful for me and Matt, because we play for Glasgow Phoenix and Nottingham Vikings. Um, and basically you can play for a team as long as they're not in the same conference kind of thing. Um, but they are a lot more relaxed and it's not dead, dead strict like it is in ice hockey, which is nice. <laughs> and and then Nottingham Vikings. How did you end up uh, in tow with 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 Nottingham Vikings? Because it's not exactly around the corner. Yeah, it's a funny story that one as well. Um, we went abroad to. It was actually in preparation for the the junior um, world championships. I'd been away in Canada, so I hadn't played ball hockey for much. So they said we want you to go with with the Lions trip, which is like the development squad, um, for a camp. And I went, and I really liked the coach's style. Um, I got on really well with him. We'd went to um, Auschwitz together. We did, we'd spent a few days beforehand because I flew in early and I just got on really well with him. Um, and I said, can I play for your team? And he goes, well, I'm in Nottingham. So it's a bit of a trek. And I was like, I, I spoke to my mom. I was like, would you drive me to these games, you know? And then we ended up committing to that. Um, and then I, I remember I messaged Benny, the coach. I said, what would you say if I could get you the top point scorer in for for my team? And you and, and I was like in the league, and he's like, "You're you're kidding me." I was like, "I can get you." So we kind of come as a package deal now, which is <laughs> good. That's, that's that's nice. So it kind of helps that you 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 might have been going out for for recruiting, I guess, for your uh, for all your various various clubs. And um, so um. Yeah, sorry, we're going around, we've went back to ball hockey and we're going off tangent. I told you that would yeah. happen before we started. But, <laughs> and in terms of the bandy, you said you, you, you obviously watch a bit of football and stuff. And, and do you think that that, for people who watch football and are big football fans, that going to watch bandy might be something that's slightly different, but something they could maybe pick up quite easily? I think so. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on the rule crossovers at the moment because um, I need to do a bit more research for that but I think it's definitely something that would be really good to get people into something a little bit different um you know get people talking a bit oh I watch Bandy oh what's Bandy and it would 
start a good conversation. So I definitely think football would be a good way to help catch the sport on. Yeah, yeah. And and in terms of bandy in, the, in Britain, obviously you've mentioned ball hockey's growing and you know ice hockey's been growing for a while. It'll be stunted, I would imagine, at the moment by COVID and the fact that ice rinks aren't all reopened yet. Murrayfield's not reopened. Bracknell is shut altogether, it would seem. But what do you think the biggest challenges are for Bandy in terms of growth in, in the UK? Obviously, the big one for me would be the, the size of ice pad, but is it what do you foresee as the, the biggest challenges for Bandy? Um, yeah, the ice pad definitely is a big challenge, I would say. I think also maybe getting hold of the equipment and even just getting the sport out there might be a bit different because obviously we, I think we import our equipment from Europe, which probably has a lot of costs that are involved. And I can't imagine shops over here just stocking them just for fun, because obviously it's 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 a vicious cycle where you need the stuff to get started, but then you need the interest to get the stuff. So it's I think that's supply and demand. That, that's a, that's a very fair point as well. I mean the the sticks, and I think the um, I was told I was right by, by Beth about this. Look a little bit like sort of shinty sticks. Now, obviously, we can't go and give people shinty sticks and tell them to go play hockey because the ball would go flying all over the place, quite frankly, because they're lofted shinty sticks. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if you know this or anything, but is that something that's all being supplied to you guys through your involvement with the, with the bandy? Or is that things that you've had to go and buy yourself? Um, well, everything we've had so far has been supplied to us, which has been absolutely amazing. Um, Obviously, we need the, the support to, to keep that up, but we've been given our, our sticks and I think we'll be getting everything else out there, um, mm. which will be honestly such a big help for us. That's one thing that's been really good is the, that we haven't had to, that financial commitment to the team um, because we, they've been helping us out an awful lot with all of that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, of course, you you for you, a lot of them are ice hockey players that are, I presume that the majority of the players in the, in the the squad are ice hockey players who are now going to try bandy as opposed to being maybe hockey players or shinty players or or whatever that are now going to try bandy. Is that is that right or is it is there anybody that is completely randomly there who's never played ice hockey? I think everyone's got a decent skating experience and hockey of some sort. I think we've got a few European players that are simply bandy but might play hockey on the side but I could be totally wrong there um but yeah I think everyone's got some sort of hockey involvement cool cool and for folk that want to maybe give bandy a bit of a well to give it a bit of a follower to give it a, a you know some support um I think there's a crowdfunder I just I shared it on Facebook um not that long ago uh, before we started recording is that is that the best way to obviously financially support it but um you know, is there anything that you you would recommend to for people to go and check out to maybe you know see if they like it or not? Yeah, I think sharing the pages would be a big help if you can't financially contribute to the team because you might reach someone that can help. Um, and even just having the support of everyone that's been supporting us along the way is honestly incredible. Um, but I think just get out, reach out, get involved, see what you can offer, you know, have fun, give it a try. Fair enough. And that's, how, I suppose that's how you have so many sports. So um, to, to veer away from sports a little bit, um, yep. obviously uh, we, we know that you've got quite a lot, well, I know that you've got quite a lot of, uh, I, I guess they're all rodents, maybe they're not all rodents. Um, but, We've actually um, got an amphibian now as well. You've got an amphibian now as well. So what is the yeah. uh, the small um, creature count in the, in the, the Thorpe household now? Right, so we've got eight guinea pigs, um, 16 rats, two hamsters, and an axolotl. An axol, what's an axolotl? Um, it's like, they're called water salamanders. They're like a salamander, um, but they're fully water-based, but they grow their legs. Um, so that's been a, a journey because I've never had aquatics before and we have to suddenly cycle this key, this this tank and um, 
make sure his temperature is good and feed him all these like worms and stuff and I'm just like I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> I like little furry rats well I mean uh, if, you, if you can pick up all that I guess you can pick up you know a new sport pretty easily then um, <laughs> with a slightly less at stake than the small creatures uh, you know well done um, and uh, I'm not really thinking you, you know, got a, you got a dog or is it two dogs or um, my mum and my grandparents have my three dogs so they're mine but I moved out so they, right. they live with them okay <laughs> Yeah, um, three spaniels. Yeah, I find that having a dog is good for you. Know you're talking about your ten k walks, having a having a dog looking at you and saying, "Come on, take me a walk." It's it's a good motivator. Uh, I'm not yeah. I'm not sure Matt can uh, perhaps look at you the same as a as a puppy can <laughs> to get you going walks. <laughs> um, well, that's that's brilliant, Amy. Um, and so what? I mean, obviously you've got a year ahead. You've got the I think the world's in March, supposedly. Yep, end of March now. End of March now, um, right before nationals. Brilliant. Yep. Um, <laughs> and what what's what else have you got planned for your your sort your sporting year? Um, this you know this in twenty twenty two. Assuming that COVID doesn't get in the way of things, what what are you what are you looking forward to? Um, so we're waiting to hear about selection for the GB ball hockey squads. So I'm hoping to make the U twenties and the senior worlds this year the u20s i'm obviously i'm 21 but they get dispensation for older players so they're hoping to potentially dispensate me and maybe becky um depending um so we're just waiting to hear back about that but hopefully we'll make the world championships cause for that um the judo is a big one for me at the moment i'm trying to just pick up as much mat time as i can because of, with covid we weren't allowed to do contact sports um so there was a lot of missed mat time there obviously I'd, I'd I'd missed four years of judo from being abroad and the time in between that and whatnot so it's just kind of trying to get back to where I was with it um so a lot of different tournaments just when I can and then obviously the ice hockey GBU um steel queens diamonds stags just as much ice time as possible Glad you mentioned the Steel Queens there. It's very important, Amy. Uh, <laughs> and but yeah, I mean, it's obviously you've got you've got a lot on, and hopefully, you know, I I know um, that COVID comes and the restrictions seem to hit the indoor contact sports first, like so judo. Even five asides, I understand, were were suspended for the last few weeks, or are suspended until the sixteenth or whatever. Um, yeah. So it it must be quite quite frustrating but hopefully you you're not got too much disruption and um you can keep kicking ass quite frankly because every time I, I see anything about your judo you seem to have whooped someone's ass and won a medal so that's uh, it's pretty good going um <laughs> and that that's that's fantastic um so uh yeah um i was just i can't remember what i was going to ask next yeah i see you sporting the kraken um the kraken uh gear um at the moment you have seattle cracking gear is this now your new team or you uh who, who's your nhl team i have too many nhl teams um i i like arizona the best i think which is a really controversial one i've liked them for years um i, I don't even know why possibly the colors of their kit um i know they've obviously got liam kirk which is another good reason to follow them um but I guess Seattle, for me, I lived out in Idaho and Washington State's right beside Idaho and we were like half an hour from the border. So I guess it's like my closest NHL team in terms of where I lived in America. So I guess that's the team I would support if I lived back out there. And the yeah. colours are also really nice. Yeah, they are really nice. They are really nice. And um, I don't know if you've ever been to Seattle. I've only been for about a day and it is, it's a lovely city. Um yeah, I've been through the airport a few times, if that counts. Yeah, well, me too, incidentally. Every time I went to Vancouver, I've flown to Seattle because it saves about 300 quid <laughs> to fly to Seattle and get the bus. Um, but um, they're absolutely sports mad as well. There was a Sounders game on when I was there, which is the, well, they call it soccer, obviously, but football. And uh, mm -hmm. the place was bonkers. You would have thought it was American football that was on. It was, it was folk everywhere. Um, yeah. And I had my mon I had my Vancouver Whitecaps hat on, 
and had a few sort of few funny looks. No one was, you know, no one was daft or anything, but it was just a few sort of like, but we're not playing you. Why are you here? And all this sort of stuff. It's like a, a tourist. I bought this when I was in Vancouver. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, no, brilliant. And uh, I, I hope I hope Seattle do quite well, actually, in the next, you know, their season, kind of maybe not winning it all, but it'd be good to see, the, you know, the new teams do well. Um, yeah. So, lastly, um, is there anyone you want to give a big kind of shout out to? Um, and then that way you can kind of force them to watch the YouTube, uh, YouTube hit. Let's go for my family and Matt's family um, and all of my teammates from every single team. Well, well that's pretty good. Going, I've just covered the whole of the UK. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, and uh, obviously, because we, we should, I think we should give a special shout out to, uh, to Vivian, um, of course, because with, without your mum, it sounds like you maybe wouldn't be doing all these mad sports and, uh, and travelling about oh, yeah, the country. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, um, she'll be longing for the day you get your own your own driving. Or you passed your test yet? I don't know. It's been. Yeah, I'm driving. I'm driving yeah. now. I, I, I think she's a bit lonely without me. <laughs> um, and lastly, and and this is a point. It's more a, a point for me. Um, I just want to check: Have you gotten a spare garage key cut now, so you don't miss your bandy worlds or anything like that? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we need to get that sorted. For, for those of you who don't know, Amy, Amy's boyfriend went to work and took the garage key and Amy had to miss the game because her kit was in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, Rambo. It, it, was, it was, to be fair, Amy, it was, it was one of the more, uh, like, sort of unique issues that we've had with people not coming to games and stuff. So it was, Hopefully it was, not something we have again. No, hopefully not. It made me chuckle and it was a bit of good fun. So it's, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much for your time, Amy. Um, I appreciate that coming on a, on a, you know, I don't even know what day it is. You know, after Christmas New Year, you don't, you don't know what day it is, right? It's Wednesday. I was, that's what I was looking at the calendar. Um, <laughs> coming on a Wednesday night, you know, in the evening after you've, you know, you've had a long day or whatever. It's brilliant to have you on. Um, I know that you're doing a lot of uni work and stuff at the moment. Obviously, you've got a full plate of sport and, small animals and family and all kinds of craziness. So um, to take time out to do this and to, you know, give me some content for my site and to, and to support Bandy and stuff is brilliant. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. It's been really good. Cheers. <laughs>